my name is Andrew Lamont, and I'm a student of Dr. Ryan Sobel's at the University of Maryland. And uh, today I'll be introducing our rapid multi-material direct laser writing process. Look at certain science fiction depictions of, of what the future is going to look like. With 3D printing, all of a sudden, these things become reality. It's all possible. It's the world of 3D printing, and it's going to change everything. As big as the steam engine was in its day. We're talking limitless customization. As big as the computer was in its day. As big as the internet was in its day. Printer in every person's home three years down the line or five years down. It's common in people's homes as the toaster oven. You print one printer that prints another printer and it's game over. So what would you build? if you could create anything. Print any object you can imagine and have it in your hands in just a matter of hours. It's going to change everything. This is certainly a very optimistic view of 3D printing, but when we look at 3D printing company's stock trends over the past few years, what you'll notice is that the optimism led to a good bit of inflation in the industry until about 2014. And at that point, there began to be a realization that the available technologies really couldn't deliver uh, to the hype that was there. And there was a steep crash in the market, which uh, the industry really hasn't been able to recover from. So the question is, where is this disconnect coming from? And the reality is that there are really a large number of barriers to the efficacy of 3D printing. And while we can't cover all of these today, uh, the three that we really want to hone in on are multi-material integration, print speed, and feature resolution. Now this is our lab logo, and it's designed to represent the three key sub-millimeter 3D printing technologies. Laser-based printing, extrusion-based printing, and inkjet-based printing. With inkjet-based printing, if you're familiar with some of the previous work from our lab, we've used this particularly because of its good multi-material integration and print speeds. However, the overall feature resolution is really several orders of magnitude higher than what we would like in the MEMS community. For extrusion-based printing, the material integration is really not too bad, but the print speed is by far the worst of any of these three, and the feature resolution is also a little bit higher than what we would want in the MEMS community. So for laser-based printing, there are a number of different techniques but our lab is specifically focused on direct laser writing. And in this strategy, a, a laser is focused into a bath of photocurable material. The focal point produces solidification. If you translate it in three dimensions, the production of a three-dimensional structure. The distinct benefit of direct laser writing is its fantastic feature resolution around 100 nanometers. And if you pair that with its good print speeds, for optical nanomaterials, mechanical nanomaterials, micro-optic lenses, regenerative medicine strategies, micro-robotics, <laughs> drug delivery, and a number of photonics applications. The question is, how is multi-material integration the right place writing? Now, unfortunately, there's only been a small handful of applications where multiple materials have been used for the right place writing. The first of these was published by the Baker and Bassmeyer groups where they integrated distinct materials into a 3D cellular scaffold. And this concept has been further developed by the Takeuchi group, uh, who currently hold the record for printing three distinct materials into a single cellular scaffold. This concept has been even further developed recently for micro-optics applications. So the question is, what's keeping everybody from doing it? Why are there so few uh, reports of uh, this multi-material print. The reality is that the multi-material integration is uh, really challenging. So with these conventional <coughs> multi-material direct laser writing protocols, uh, if you want to fabricate a structure such as this, you start by depositing a photo material onto your glass substrate. You then load your substrate into your printer and use direct laser writing to fabricate your initial component. You then need to remove your substrate from the printer and place it in a solvent developing bath to wash away any of that unsolidified material. From there, you can place your second photo material back onto the substrate and load the structure back into the printer. 
Now this step is what's particularly challenging about this whole process because you need to manually go and search for that component, which is especially challenging if that previous component is optically transparent. So when or if you find that structure, you need to then set your rotational axis so that your second component is fully aligned to your previously fabricated component. And you also need to uh, set the center point in the x, y, and z directions to make sure that your second structure is fully aligned to the first. Once you're fully aligned, you can then use direct laser lighting to uh, fabricate your second component, remove it from the printer, place it in your solvent developing that, and you're left with your completed print. Ultimately, this process is very time labor intensive, and the alignment accuracy of this multi-material process is highly dependent on the skill of the user, uh, often resulting in very high rates of print failure. So our goal for this uh, project was obviously to improve the time and labor requirements. But really the key goal was to completely eliminate that manual alignment step. Therefore, we can maximize our, the success and repeatability of our prints. So these goals led us to develop our rapid multi-material direct laser writing strategy. In a paper we published about a week ago, uh, we demonstrated the ability to fabricate directly inside of micro channels. With that project is that our device was fully permanently bonded. And what we realized was that we could uh, expand our capabilities if we allowed the elastomer to be removed from that glass substrate. So to create our microfluidic chips for this rapid multi-material direct laser writing strategy, we use a thermal bonding process where we get a relatively weak adhesion to create a device that looks something like this. We then plug our fluidic inputs to our channels and load the device into our printer. And from there we can apply our vacuum pressure to the outlet allowing our input fluids to be perfused right to our region of interest. So when we're ready to fabricate, we load our first material into our channel and use direct laser writing to fabricate that initial component. From there, we can perfuse our developing solution through the channel to eliminate any of that unsolidified material. The distinct benefit with this strategy is that our device remains in place the whole time meaning that when we load our second photo material into our channel, we're already fully aligned to that previously fabricated structure, so no manual alignment step is ever necessary. We can just automatically use direct laser writing to fabricate that second component, and then perfuse our developing solvent through there. And we can continue this process with as many materials as we would like. So we load our, load our photo material, do the direct laser writing, and load our developing solutions over and over until we're left with our completed print in the channel. And for these conceptual images, you're seeing our fabrication process for our five material DNA double helix structure. So once your component is fully fabricated, you can pull the device out of the printer. And because of that weak adhesion that I mentioned, you can peel the elastomer away from the glass substrate, leaving your completed print on the surface of your, of your substrate. So here's some fabrication results for that DNA double helix component. The top video that you're seeing is a uh, computer-aided manufacturing simulation of the full component. And the bottom, bottom video that you're seeing is the, uh, the corresponding uh, direct laser writing fabrication video. Now while it may appear that the laser is curing multiple areas at once, but it is a truly point-by-point, -point, layer by layer process. Now once we're done fabricating this, we're left with a fully integrated structure with our multiple materials all aligned together in one component. I wanted to produce a couple different uh, structures to fully demonstrate this strategy. So we took the MEMS 2019 logo and split it into three distinct sections, which we fabricated with three distinctly fluorescent materials. Shown here in the top image with a fluorescence micrograph and the bottom image with a false colored SEM image. Additionally, we took our University of Maryland logo and split it into four distinct sections. The bottom is a non-fluorescent base material, and the top it has three distinctly fluorescent materials, which we verified with control imaging. 
Now, my advisor, Dr. Sokol, is a uh, particularly big fan of Nintendo. So he asked me if I could fabricate Mario. So I fabricated the first micro multi-material Mario. When we compare this conventional fabrication process to a rapid multi-material process, we fabricate these two material systems with a top layer aligned to a bottom layer. Now with a conventional strategy, when we quantified our results, we found that there was uh, on average about one to two micron offset between these two layers. Whereas with our rapid multi-material approach, we were able to reduce this offset by an order of magnitude. In addition, when we compared the fabrication times for these two processes, what we found was up to a 75% reduction in the overall fabrication time for these two materials. So in the future, what we'd like to do is create a more automated process by integrating two components that we've previously demonstrated. One is the use of microfluidic circuitry components and a single pressure input to control the flow of distinct but multiple fluids. Additionally, in the paper that we published last week, uh, we demonstrated the ability to direct laser write 3D microfluidic circuitry components directly inside of and fully sealed to our elastomeric channels. So what we want to do is combine these two concepts together so that we can produce a completely automated system on chip. So in conclusion, with our rapid multi-material strategy, what we've been able to show when we look at our three metrics that we began with, for multi-material integration, we've demonstrated the integration of the five distinct materials into a single component, which is absolutely unprecedented in the literature for direct laser writing. When we look at print speed, while we're not changing the actual print speed of our printer, we've shown up to a 75% reduction in overall multi-material print time. While we're not changing our feature resolution, we have shown an order of magnitude improvement in multi-material alignment. And with that, I would like to open it up for questions. Thank you.